Welcome to In the Spotlight with their host, Ambia Salim. Hi, I'm Ambia Salim and this is In the Spotlight. My guest today is Benedictine student and president of the Hindu Student Association, Aditya Kapoor. Aditya, thank you so much for joining me today. No problem at all. Um, so let's start by talking about your experience at Benedictine. How did you end up choosing this university? So going through senior year of high school and applying to colleges, everyone feels obviously overwhelmed. For me, I got accepted and I decided, you know what, let me come onto campus for this visit day. So walking from the parking garage to Krasba at that time in a blizzard, I felt at home. The small class size, the small campus, easy access to everything really made it feel comfortable here. So I decided, you know what, this is right. That's really wonderful. Not everybody gets that sort of experience when they do a college visit. Um, and Benedictine has a really large um, South Asian community here. Did that affect your decision at all? Actually, to be honest, I didn't realize how big it was until I got here. And then when I did, I was like, you know what? Let me just not associate with people who I do have commonality with. I'm going to expand my horizons as well. Great. Um, and I know you're a psychology major. Could you tell us a little bit about how you chose that? So I began as biology for pre-pharmacy. And kind of going through the motions, I realized, you know what, this isn't for me. And then I decided to switch to business. And then I realized, you know what, I cannot see myself working in an office or a cubicle for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I was struggling a little bit. So my friend recommended that I take a psychology course just to boost up my grades a little bit. And a few years later, I ended up loving it. That's great. Um, and uh, what made you want to join the HSA? When I was a senior in high school, Benedictine actually came to my high school oh. and the admissions counselor who was present gave us a flyer uh, that had all the clubs listed on there and one of them was HSA. I never heard of something like that before and I was like, you know what, let me try something new. So on the first quad day, I found the HSA table and lo and behold, it was a home away mm -hmm. from home, essentially. Um, so uh, as a Hindu, what role does your religion play in your life? For me, it provides a balance, knowing that, yes, there are days when I'm going to have good days and I'm going to have bad days. But no matter what, for me, it's whenever I think about anything religious, it makes me feel more comfortable and at peace. And I find that peace within myself. That's great. I think that's a really universal feeling we have. Um, and how do you fit that into the way you lead the Hindu Student Association? I take it as, you know what, I have to take this in a leadership stance. So I have to think about all the mythology, all the stories of those leaders. Mm -hmm. How can I take their values and how they did things and into my own leadership as well? That's really great. Um, I know you've always been heavily involved with the HSA and sort of been their spokesperson. Um, so what made you want to take that leadership role? In high school, I had always wanted a leadership, leadership position like that. And I was voted onto the board for my Indian Student Association at my high school, but I didn't get it. So instead, I realized, you know what? This is college, it's a little bit bigger, there's opportunities for everybody. So I applied as the event coordinator for my sophomore year. And a few years later, working my up the way up the ladder, I ended up becoming their president. That's awesome. We're going to take a quick break, but stick around because when we come back, Aditya is going to tell us why you should be interested in HSA. Welcome to Ben News for December. I'm Jessica Bittner. And I'm Claudia Rojas. Here are this month's top stories. On Wednesday, November 15th, students and faculty came together for a Ben Talks dialogue session. The discussion was on what it is like being transgender in higher education setting. 
The opening discussion really gave the students and faculty members a chance to express their thoughts and feelings on how society has changed. People brought up how society has changed their views on the LGBT community. Everyone was able to learn something new about the community. I of the Eagle reporter Jessica Bittner spoke with Rex Finan, one of the students who led the open discussion. Hello everyone, this is Jessica Bittner and I am here with Rex Finan to talk about today's Ben Talks program. So what was the Ben Talks program today about? Uh, today the Ben Talk was about being transgender in higher education. So uh, basically about being transgender in college and what, what that might be like. So what were the main points that were brought up today? Some of the points were uh, safe bathrooms, so gender neutral restrooms on campus or just gender neutral restrooms abroad. Um, and the homeless crisis that happens with transgender and LGBT youth. Uh, we also touched on you know, the, the difference between using a given name and a preferred name and why it's important to use the preferred name. Why do you think this topic is important in our society today? I think being transgender is becoming a very politicized um, and polarized kind of thing. And I think in order to over overcome the division between people who are okay with it and people who are really not okay with it, um, you need to have these conversations to kind of make that bridge um, occur between the two so that we can come to some kind of happy medium and understanding with each other. All right, well, thank you for talking with us today. This is Jessica Bittner reporting for Eye of the Eagle. Many people gathered in the Goodwin Hall Auditorium as the Center for Civic Leadership hosted political commentator and radio host Charlie Sykes. Sykes is a conservative analyst who previously hosted one of the top-rated talk shows in Wisconsin. Sykes is currently a contributor for MSNBC slash NBC News. At the event, Sykes gave a presentation entitled Identities and Belonging in the Trump Era, One Conservative's View, where he voiced his concerns about President Trump and the current state of the Republican Party. I have the Eagle reporter Ryden Scarnato talked with Sykes on how the event came to be and his current thoughts on the current political landscape. Hi, I'm Ryan Scarnato with I the Eagle, and I'm here with Charlie Sykes. Uh, Charlie, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Um, first question I have for you is uh, how did this event come together? Well, I think they, they wanted me to talk about my new book, uh, How the Right Lost Its Mind, a little bit of a perspective of what it's like to be a conservative in the era of Donald Trump. I, I don't think there's any secret that I've uh, during the primary was, was, was never Trump, and obviously it's been an awkward year. One thing, you know, with this crazy political climate yeah. is, uh, you know, what's one thing that you would like to see change? Well, I, w I would actually like us to be able to get back to a fact-based rule of law uh, kind of politics. Uh, I think what most disturbs me is how intensely partisan, intensely tribal our politics has become where I think a lot of people really don't care what is true or what is not true as long as their team is winning. And I think that poses a real threat to democracy. Well, uh, thank you for taking time to talk to me. Well, thank you. And uh, this has been Ryden Scornado for I the Eagle. Benedictine University kicked off their International Education Week November 13th with an international short film screening and discussion with guest speaker Milos Stalik from WBEZ 91.5. Stalik showed three international short films. The first film, The Circle, was a Turkish film about the discrimination that the EZD religion suffers in Mesopotamia. The second film, 10,000 Years Older, was created by Werner Hozog in 2002 about an ancient tribe village in Brazil. The final short film Stalik showed was created by a Swedish graphic design student. The animated musical is called The Burden. I of the Eagle reporter Emily Nitty spoke with Benedictine's global and intercultural program coordinator Megan Benham about what this discussion can bring to the university and Milos Stalik about how he co-founded Chicago's Fast Sets Multimedia. I'm Emily of I of the Eagle here with Megan Benham. We're doing an international screening of short films and a discussion today with Milos Stalik. What do you think that this event can bring to the students of Benedictine? So I hope that it can bring a knowledge that the world has, like, has the same ideas we have, but also shows them in different ways, and that um, maybe artistic expression is a great way to share a story. And then you're also a part of, or you're the co-founder of Facets Multimedia. Do you want to give our viewers a little bit of insight on what that is exactly? Well, Facets is a film center. It's all about film, so we show films every day of the week, which are film, independent films, art films, documentaries from around the world, including, of course, independent American films. Uh, <coughs> we um, 
have a Videotech, which is a library of 65,000 films on DVD, essentially the largest public archive, publicly accessible archive of films anywhere in the world. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to this conversation and everything that you have to say about these films that we're going to be seeing. Thank this you. has been Emily with Eye of the Eagle. Thank you. Fashion show season is officially underway at Benedictine University as the Black Student Union hosted the I Am Art Fashion Show viewing party in Cross 050 on November 17th. The viewing party gave students the opportunity to socialize, drink, and eat while viewing clips from last year's show. The host relayed information about this year's tryouts during the event. Information will also be posted on the BSU social media and around campus. The event ended with a catwalk competition for prizes. Junior Scotty Bobek stole the show. Great lectures have been in abundance the last month here at Ben U. Kicking off was Father Greg Boyle, who visited the campus on Friday, November 3rd. Boyle, an expert on gangs and intervention approaches, presented his lecture, Tattoos on the Heart, Healing Hospitality, as part of the Center for Civil Leadership Speaker. In front of a standing room only Goodwin Hall Auditorium, Boyle shared his first-hand accounts of his homeboys' stories and lives. His homeboys, as Boyle likes to refer to his clients, are the young men he has worked with over the years and grew up with and lived through gang life and got caught up in tough situations. The College of Science hosted an open house on Saturday, November 21st, welcoming community members to explore science opportunities at Benedictine. Attendees were welcomed with an introduction in Goodwin Hall and then got the chance to speak to faculty and staff about academic programs, the application process, available scholarships, and financial aid in Burke Hall. College of Science students shared their summer research and gave tours of the campus as students and parents walked by. Nabiha Asim spoke with the Dean of College of Science, Dr. Robin Reilerstam, on the department's goals. Hi, I'm Nabiha Asim, and I'm here at the College of Science Open House with Dr. Robin Reilers Dam. So, Dr. Reilers Dam, I see students with posters, parents, and classrooms, and professors. Can you give us a little insight on what's going on here? Sure, we're having our College of Science Open House. We have this event every fall to recruit new students to our great programs in the College of Science. Okay, thank you. Um, and can you tell us? Uh, what is the essential purpose of this event? We want to give our visitors, prospective high school students and their parents, a tour of the whole building and let them see all the great equipment that we have that our students at Benedictine get to use really right away from their freshman year on. So a lot of the students here have uh, been involved in research programs, so can you tell us how the research programs help students, uh, Benedictine students, prepare for the uh, field of science? Sure, we have a really unique thing here at Benedictine in that we have a summer research program that gives paid internships to between 20 and 30 students every summer to work with faculty on campus. So most of the students in the red shirts have been part of that program and as part of their pay they uh, volunteered at this event but to be a, a real researcher is really invaluable in science education. Oh, that's an awesome program. Thank you for talking with us. You're welcome. For Ben News, this is Nabiha Asim. On Wednesday, November 29th, Jennifer Scavoni's seminar and writing class held a multimedia performance featuring poems and short stories the students wrote during the semester. Each student presented a short story based on a famous piece of artwork. They also presented poems accompanied by multimedia performances, such as videos and music the students composed themselves. Ambia Salim spoke with Mrs. Scavoni about what went into planning the performance and what it was like to see her students' work come to life. Hi, I'm Ambia Salim for Eye of the Eagle, and I'm joined here with uh, Miss Jennifer Scavoni, COM267 teacher. Miss Scavoni, today we had the multi multimedia performance. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about um, wh what that is? Well, the multimedia performance is an event that uh, celebrates bringing together uh, the written word and the spoken word with other forms of communication, such as uh, performance, uh, music, uh, new media, and uh, just exploring new ways to create in the visual performing arts. So That's great. And one final question. Yes. How do you think your students did? Oh, they were awesome. Um, I'm so impressed. Just the, the, the depth of, of meaning in their work, uh, just profound. They were just profound. I'm very, very proud of, of my students. Ms. Scavoni, thank you so much for t uh, speaking with me today. You put on a wonderful show for us. 
For Eye of the Eagle, I'm Umbia Salim. Thank you so much. The Benedictine Library hosted an event titled Ghosts of Christmas Past, an event that featured a Benedictine University alumna involved in paranormal research in the Chicago area. The event featured stories about ghosts that haunted the Benedictine campus and why so many ghosts continued to show up around campus. Eye of the Eagles' Matthew Naughton spoke with Ur Ursula Bielski about her work as a paranormal researcher and the different ghosts that haunt Benedictine's campus. Hello, I'm Matthew Naughton and I'm here with paranormal researcher Ursula Bielski. Uh, you came here today to talk about uh, the haunting on campuses, campus here and about how haunted Benedictine University campus is. Uh, why exactly is Benedictine so haunted or why are these areas on campus so haunted? I think it's a combination of things. I think one of the things is because of the spiritual background of the whole place. And I think there's just a spiritual quality about the whole place because of the history of religious orders and uh, very deeply spiritual people that have lived here and died here and are buried here on campus in the cemetery. During the presentation, you mentioned that you used to do tours on campus. Is there any chance that those are going to come back in the future? Absolutely. I just talked to one of your events directors just a few minutes ago, and we are going to be bringing these back next year. These have been really popular events. I think we had 150 people on the tour last year when we did our walking tour. So, yeah, so look out for um, the sign-up for that, because those are always a lot of fun. Cool. I definitely will. Uh, I'm Matthew Naughton. For Hi, guys. My name is Jeanette Gonzalez. I'm with Eye of the Eagle, and I'm here with Marlene. Marlene is, what's your title, Mr. Um, I'm the treasurer of Student Senate. And I'm here also with Mari. And Mari, what is your title? I'm a student senator from Outreach. Okay. Thank you guys so much for being here. So today, with the mac and cheese and everything, what do we have going on? So this is our event for Student Senate. We basically hold, we try to hold as many fundraisers as we can to fundraise for scholarships. Um, we give out two scholarships for Aspire and uh, Hope. And these go towards students, um, you know, like when you have to apply on STARS. So these are uh, one of the scholarships that students can apply for. Okay, and then in gathering the event, guys, did it take a lot of planning? What did you guys have to do to be able to do this? We all signed up for different time slots, all of us. And usually Marlene takes care of the times, make sure everyone is here. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. I'm Jeanette Gonzalez with Eye of the Eagle. The Ben Union Underground really pulled in a crown at the annual pool tournament on Thursday, November 2nd. Students had the chance to attend and compete in the tournament for a $30 munch money card that they can use anywhere on campus. Students competed in teams and were able to play each other until they were eliminated. Hi, I'm Claudia Rojas for Eye of the Eagle and I'm here with Emily Payne, the organizer of the intramural billiards tournament. So Emily, I know that this was here last year, um, so is this like a new annual tradition for the intramural sports on campus? Yeah, well since we got the pool tables, um, I always like to keep things fresh with intramurals, so we always like to try new stuff. Um, we do, you know, our basketballs and volleyballs and, and kind of our, our typical intramurals, but then I like to mix it up with some different ones, um, single night stuff. So um, yeah, the pool, the pool tournament seems to be really successful, so we're going to keep bringing it back as long as people keep showing up. So what do the teams receive if they win this tournament? And I'm asking for a friend, not definitely not for me. <laughs> Well, um, this year we teamed up with um, Programming Board and Student Activities and Leadership Development. So we were able to bring um, $30 of munch money. And then we were also able to provide um, pie for everyone who showed up to watch or to play. So it made it a lot of fun. So thanks so much for talking with us today, Emily. I'm Claudia Rojas for Eye of the Eagle. Gobble, gobble. Thanksgiving has come and gone, but the Benedictine Thanksgiving dinner has been a fixture at BU for years. It is always hosted the Thursday before the holiday break, and this year it was on November 16th. Students and faculty were invited to come to the dinner along with their families. The cafeteria was filled with happy, smiling people. There were large food tables with a variety of meats, as well as many vegetarian options and a dessert table. There were volunteers acting as servers and meat cutters, including many Benedictine faculty and staff. And that's been News for December. I'm Jessica Bittner. And I'm Claudia Rojas. Now let's turn to sports with Ryden Scarnato. So what's happening in sports this month, Ryden? Well, the football team just finished their season with a 7-3 record, and uh, men and women's basketball is starting up, so uh, those are the stories coming up. 
Who says you need to go to a big name supermarket for fresh produce? Tom's Farmer's Market and Stand offers customers a traditional shopping experience with better product. Try our homegrown sweet corn, pickles, vine ripe tomatoes, or apple cider donuts, all of which are GMO free. While you're here, make sure to check out our other items because remember, just because it isn't Tom's homegrown doesn't mean it isn't Tom's recommended. With locations in Huntley and Bartlett, we at Tom's invite you to come visit and have your unique shopping experience today. Welcome to Eagle Sports, I'm Rajan Scarnato. The football team played host to the Spartans of Aurora University in the final game of the season. It was senior day for the Eagles and they looked to cap off their college careers with a win over the conference rival Spartans. A win here would also mark their fourth straight and a second place finish in the neck. Both teams would open up the game with a three and out on their first possessions. The Eagles started out with good field position on their second drive and Ryan Sample completed two clutch passes, one to Joe Morello for 23 yards on third down and one to Matt Fleming for a 22 yard touchdown. The Eagles found the end zone again later in the second quarter with a 30 yard touchdown pass from Sample to Brandon Moore. The Spartans would get a touchdown of their own in the third quarter to cut the Eagle lead in half. In the fourth quarter, both teams would score again, with Aurora making a drive late on their final possession. The Eagles make a big stop on fourth and three and seal the win. I, the Eagles, Marco D'Angelo spoke with senior Dean Pauly after the game. Hello, I'm Marco D'Angelo for I, the Eagle, and I'm here with senior Dean Pauly for the Eagles. How you doing? Oh, I'm feeling great after that win, though. Feeling good, feeling good. I see you got close at the end there, though, huh? It was a, it was a bit of a nerve, nerve wracker, uh, nail biter, you know. Um, it got close, but our defense stepped up big. Big time. Uh, Talking about you now, had a lot of targets, a lot of receptions. Was that the game plan going into the game? Um, it's not really the game plan, you know. Our game plan is just uh, throw to who's ever open, you know. And our job, our job is to get open. So today just happened to be me. And I mean, there were other receivers making big catches too. Fleming had a couple. B. Moore had a couple. Mitchell came off the bench, had a couple. So yeah. that's good. At the half, uh, what was uh, being said in the locker room from the coach? We just had to finish. You know, we had a lot of intensity in that first half. And we just had to keep that same intensity and no matter what, just finish and uh, fight through any adversity that comes our way. Good. Uh, at the end of the game, there was a bit of an altercation on the field. Yeah. Uh, what was that all about? You know, it's just a lot of animosity built, and animosity built up. And, um, you know, emotions were flaring and uh, got the better of us, but it won't happen again. Okay. Thank you. That's all we have. I'm Mark D'Angelo for I, the Eagle. The Lady Eagles are carrying a lot of momentum early in their season after a close overtime victory against Lake Forest. The win marked the second for Benedictine on the year, compared to only one loss. Although it was still early in the year, the Eagles are soaring with confidence through the play of Vanita Parsons and DeAsia Williams. Parsons led the way with 24 points, while Williams added 15 points to the lead, the Eagles' victory. The Benedictine Eagles took on the Aurora Spartans Saturday, finishing the game with an 85-77 victory. The Eagles started off strong with baskets made by Eric Radko and Braden Olsen to grab a quick 4-0 lead. The Spartans battled back in the second half to tie the game at 61 with 11 minutes and 41 seconds left in the game. The tie didn't hold for long as the Eagles broke the game out open with a 13-point run to take the lead. The Spartans would not come close to the Eagles with a final score of 85-77. Senior Braden Olsen had 23 points, 8 rebounds, and 5 assists. After the game, I the Eagles' Chance Sturbis caught up with Olsen. Hi, I'm Chance Sturbis with I the Eagle. I'm here with Braden Olsen from the Benedicting Eagles. Braden, being a huge rival game today, uh, what was it like playing in the atmosphere against Aurora? You know, it's always nice playing a rivalry game. Uh, you know, fans get really into it. Uh, the teams go harder, and uh, it was just really nice to come out with a win. Awesome. Um, what was Coach's game plan going into the game, and how did you guys execute it? We're bigger than them. Uh, they, they go about five five wings so really pounded it inside was kind of the uh, MO for us tonight and execution too. We let them speed us up a little bit when they got into our press but when we execute we're a really tough team to defeat. Awesome. Being a senior how do you feel that your season is going so far? You know it started out a little slow but as soon as we got into conference play I knew that with a tough out of conference that we'd be uh, composed to really make a run for our, our third straight uh, NAC tournament championship so it's going really well so far. Great, huge win today, you had 23 points. How are, gonna, how are you gonna use to build off that going into next uh, game? Uh, you know, my teammates do a really good job of setting me up and it just comes naturally throughout the offense. So if we continually just run our stuff, the shots will come. And you know, it's all about the work that you put in outside of the game. So I know that basketball is a lot of flow. So if I keep shooting and it'll just start to drop. 
I'm Ryan Scarnato, and that has been Sports for December. Feel free to catch up with us next semester. This is Emily with Eye of the Eagle. This month we're asking students what they're asking for for Christmas. So Charlene, what are you asking for for Christmas? A dog. What kind of dog? A golden retriever. Some clothes and some money. What you want the money for? To get some more clothes. All I want for Christmas is some cash money and some clothes. A corgi. If you don't mind me asking, what's a corgi? It's a really cute dog. Uh, this year I'm either shooting for a MacBook or an Apple Watch. What are you asking for Christmas? Clothes and shoes. I want a chug bud. <laughs> a man. Okay. I'm kidding, no. Um, I don't celebrate Christmas. So for Christmas, I'm not really doing anything because we don't celebrate Christmas. However, the entire family will be home because it's a national holiday. Excuse me, what would you like for Christmas? Oh my god. No. <laughs> what would you like for Christmas? Some money. <laughs> That's a good answer. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What do you want for Christmas? A new laptop. A new laptop. Yeah. So what do you want for Christmas? I want a full-on Deadpool costume. Not to be so afraid of everything. <laughs> Are you afraid of this interview? Not really. I just really need to pass all my classes. Honestly, I would like free tuition. A 4.0 GPA. And, and good grades. All A's. Okay, what about you? I just want my degree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I have a question for you. What do you want sure. for Christmas this year? I want the form of the good. The time off and spending time with my family and loved ones. Probably just to see my whole family since everyone's separated. I'm just looking for free time and spending time with my family, not being in school. The well-being of my friends and my family, and most importantly, my mom. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm uh, here with Frank Deandra. Uh, Frank, what do you want for Christmas? Uh, well, Matt, honestly, I just hope to graduate with good grades and keep up my standing. Hi, I'm Frank. I'm here with Eye of the Eagle. Matt, what would you like for Christmas? Uh, some world peace would be nice. Some world peace, and who can argue with that? This has been Frank of Eye of the Eagle. Welcome back to In the Spotlight with your host, Ambia Salim. Hi, welcome back. We're here with Aditya Kapoor, president of the Hindu Student Association. So Aditya, um, as you know, the political climate has become very heated in the past year, but people are trying harder and harder to understand each other and become more accepting um, and embrace each other. So for our viewers who aren't really familiar with HSA and what it does and what it can offer them, what would you like them to know? We as the Hindu Student Association here at Benedictine want the whole po student population to know that whether you are Indian, whether you are Hindu, whether you are Sikh, Muslim, atheist, humanist, Sikh, or anything, we're just any other club for you that you can hopefully be a part of. We're not here to convert anybody. We're in here to simply enhance the knowledge of Hinduism and what it means to us and to our community as well. That's wonderful. And so what percentage of the HSA is non-Hindu? I would say that out of our total population, there are about three or four that are practicing Hindus. Everyone else is either a seeker, uh, more on the agnostic side, uh, even Christian and Sikh for that matter. And how many people are in the HSA currently? Board members, we have eight and about signed up members, about 40 or 50 or so. So um, would you say it's more based in community rather than religion? I would definitely say it's more based around community with religious aspects in the sense of you know take care of one another so it's it's very cultural based that's a big part of it yes and no uh yes because obviously we aren't just hindu we are indian as mm -hmm. well so we try to incorporate a little bit of that in there but instead we like to focus on you know what how can we better ourselves and how can we better our community and those around us as well um so what kind of things does the hsa do for the community so we host certain annual events that celebrate certain Hindu festivals. And one thing I've been personally been wanting to try is uh, other festivals as well. So maybe some Sikh holidays and some uh, Catholic ones as well. Um, so I know college can be a really difficult place to make friends sometimes. And since you're a psychology major, mm -hmm. could you speak briefly about some of the benefits of joining a club or a group like this? Joining either HSA or honestly any type of club whether it's one that you identify with or not, I would personally say enhances your social circle. 
it helps with your networking skills and it I would say it helps build your confidence as well like I am a member of the Indian Student Association the HSA and even Mosaic which is our interfaith group mm -hmm. but I love participating in events that are held on by like PSA or BSU or even UNICEF to enhance my knowledge of everything else as well so the HSA is really a way to engage with the community and open up to other cultures and other ex people's experiences too. Yes. It's wonderful. And before we go, I know HSA has a few events coming up in the spring. Yes. Would you like to tell us a little bit about those? Sure. We are planning right now our Holy Festival, which is the Festival of Colors. So mm -hmm. we're hoping to work with a few uh, locations to see if maybe we can provide transportation. And then in April, we do have our annual India Night, which is a showcase about Indian diversity, culture through dancing, acting, singing, and more as well. So that we co-host it with the Indian Student Association as well. Aditya, thank you so much for speaking with me today. I no really problem. appreciate it. Uh, that's all the time we have today. I'm Ambia Saleem, and this has been In the Spotlight. Thank you for watching. Oh wait, sorry. Um, I just totally missed it. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> About the game, tonight's game. I guess. Ah. Possession to Eagles. Stop. Oh, stop. Sorry. Ah, so close. Sykes is currently a contributor for MN MSNBC slash NBC News. And I'm Claudia Rojas. Now let's. Just kidding. Well, the uh, Benedictine men's football. <laughs> I don't know if it's a men's football team. Um, how are the sports doing this month? <laughs> Hi, I'm here with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Planning the performance and what? Sorry, sorry. They also presented poems accompanied, accompanied about what went into the planning the, of the performance. Frick, I'm sorry. So, what's happening in sports this month, Ryden? Well, the football team is finished with the seven. And so, how are sports? God, I'm so sorry. How is my brain today? Sorry. <laughs> About the students who led, one of the students who led, they opened the school. It was so cool. Gobble, That's it.